I said, we've got Laura and Jeff from Interlochen School of the Arts, and we have three singers signed up today. So Kina, Jana, and Isaac. And so if you are here, will you just put in the chat that to let me know that you are here? I do see a couple of you, so that's great. And we will go in that order if we uh, if we can. We'll start with Kina and then go to J Jana and then Isaac at the end. And we also are hoping for a few minutes of questions at the very end of the class. So be prepared with questions um, and you'll be able to enter those in the chat or ask them in person by raising your hand digitally or actually <laughs> um, at the end. And yeah, I think that's about it. And I'm just gonna turn the time over to Jeff and Laura. Thank you so much. Great, thank you so much, Mary. Um, so I'm Dr. Laura Osgood-Brown. It's so great to see all of you here. Um, I can't wait to hear you sing and to work with you a little bit. Um, I am a soprano. Uh, my pronouns are she, her. And um, I've been teaching for about seven years at Interlochen. We are a boarding school for high schoolers in the arts. Um, and we also have a pretty awesome summer camp as well. Um, yes, some thumbs up. So um, I think we're a really special institution because we really focus on teaching high school singers and figuring out what do you need to get to the next step. We teach classical voice. We also teach musical theater and contemporary voice as well. So excited to be here and hear you all sing and um, know that in all of us, you've got you've got some big fans already because we all share share the same love of this music. Um, I like to introduce my colleague, Jeff Norris. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Brown. I'm, I'm Jeff Norris, and I am in my window next to Dr. Brown. And oddly enough, uh, Dr. Brown is about 12 feet that way on the other side of that wall behind me or next to each other. And uh, yeah, we're delighted to, to have you here today and, 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 and be part of this. Um, I've been here a long, long time and uh, worked with probably uh, 450 to 500 students through my studio in the time I've been here. So it's been a while and seen a bit and, and still love it. Still love teaching, still love working with uh, young people and, and seeing that, that look in their eye when something works for them and happens. And, and uh, yeah, and just, you know, enjoy tonight. It, it's uh, for me tonight, maybe not where you are, but enjoy tonight and have fun. And, and, and I, when I go into a master class, even now, having been to a lot of them, um, I always say to myself, hey, Jeff Norris, let's walk out today with learning one thing, just one thing. If nothing else, just one thing and give it a try. And, and I remember what it was like being a student and going to master classes and I'd hear some things and I'd run down to the practice room in college and I'd try. And sometimes, you know, it's like they say, throw it against the wall and see what sticks. Sometimes things clicked and sometimes they didn't. And that's fine. Both things are fine because that way you learn what works for you. So, uh, yeah, so I was excited to hear you guys sing and, and share and, and uh, be part of this. So thank you. Thank you. And also, I'd just like to take a moment and introduce Lindsay Anderson, who's also here. Um, she is my colleague from admissions at Interlochen, so she can help us answer um, questions about uh, the camp and the high school. And Lindsay's also a pretty awesome singer as well. Yes, it's, I'm so happy to be here and so excited to listen to you all. And I'll be around the whole time. So if you have any questions about our programs afterwards, feel free to ask. Thanks. So why don't we get started with our first singer? Awesome. Kina, okay. will you um, will you introduce yourself? Yeah. yeah. Um, hi, I'm Kina. I'm a soprano. I'm 16. Uh, she, her pronouns. And um, should I just start singing? Sorry, I haven't done one of these yet. So. <laughs> oh, I'm so excited then that we get to be at your first master class. Yeah, that's a perfect introduction. And let's have you give your performance and then we'll talk about it and see if we can see if we can help you. Okay, perfect. Then um, I will be singing. Uh, I don't know his name from She Loves Me. I don't know his name or what he looks like, 
but I have a much more certain guide. I can tell exactly what he looks like inside. When I undertook this correspondence, little did I know I'd grow so fond. Little did I know our views would so correspond. He writes me what his feelings are on Shaw, Flaubert, and Chopin, Renoir. The more I read, the more I find we're one in mind and heart. I know the kind of home we share, the books, the prints, the music, they're a home, a life. That's warm and full and rich in love and art. Yeah, I don't need to see his handsome profile. I don't need to see his manly frame. All I need to know is in each letter, each long revealing. If I knew his name. <laughs> Thank you. Yay. All right. Um, I have things to say, Dr. Brown. Dr. Brown, why don't you dive right in? Oh, go. sure. And then we'll take some turns. So, okay. brava. Really wonderful performance. So a couple of things that um, I'd love to chat about, um, Kina. I think we can talk a little bit about breath and just finding ways to help you be even more comfortable in your phrases um, and maybe talk just a little bit about support and management. But I don't have a lot to say for your, your character arc and your acting. You're so involved. I love it. And even from the very first moment, like you use your first, your, your first moments of introduction to set up the, uh, set up your character and situation. So congrats to you for that. Yeah, thank you. You're welcome. So, um, tell me, <laughs> tell me, what do you, what do you usually think about when you, when you think about support? Are you looking for a feeling? Do you have images you like to use? Um, I sort of, okay, um, I started taking vocal lessons like maybe four years ago, so like I don't know that much yet, um, but um, I normally just sort of try to like think about like standing up really straight and making sure that like my core is engaged, but um, besides that, not much. <laughs> No, no, it's a long, long journey and you're, you're well on your way already. So let's just do a few things that help us kind of see, help us kind of feel your breath. So I'm just going to like give you some sounds. So um, I want you to take just a step back if you can, so I can see a little bit more of your torso. Um, and maybe you can even put camera your camera too. down. Yeah. Yes, that's fabulous. And I'm going to even move back so you can see mine. Maybe you put a hand here on your rib cage and a hand here on your belly. And let's just take a nice big inhalation and let it go. And another one, inhale and let it go. And let's just make some sounds. Ooh. Ooh. Yeah, I'm wondering if you can get even more core to the end of that. Ooh. Okay. Ooh. Yeah, that had more strength because the beginning isn't the most important part. Mm -hmm. It's more, you know, the middles and the endings. That's where I want a little bit more. So, oh. can you sustain that long? Oh. Good. All right. So, that's just sort of like to show the idea. Now, mm -hmm. Um, let's find one of the more sustained passages. We'll start there. Um, I think there was something and all or oh, trying to find. 
carry the text. Um, do you remember a part it's like and all the something something I don't have music in front um, of me. Uh, maybe like and art. Yes, and art. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> if we could start at that part, that would be great. Um, should I do my accompaniment or? Sure. Do you do you know around where that is? No. <laughs> <laughs> do you have a, Do you remember what around what pitch it is that starts on? Do you have your music? Yeah, it's on? no. I I know the tune. I was just wondering. Yeah, then just do it a cappella. That's fine. I just don't happen to have this one in my office, so yeah, no. let's go for it. And art, I don't need to see his handsome profile. I don't yeah, need to do see. you feel how at the end, profile, you get a little bit squished? Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. I don't need to see his handsome profile. It like it just flies off. Try that. I don't need to see his handsome profile. Yeah, and what if you don't give so much to see his hand? What if that just sort of soars as well? Can you do this with your hand and just give it a little bit of shape? I don't need to see his handsome profile. Okay. I don't need to see his handsome profile. Yes, I got better intonation and better space and tone at the end. Now start from and art. And art. Yeah, stay open even for that. I the scoop is not a bad thing, but the scoop makes you crunch mm -hmm. just a little bit. And art. And art. I don't need to see his handsome profile. Keep going. Okay. I don't need to see his manly frame. All I need to know is in each letter. Each Good. Okay. Letter. So, Kina, does any of that feel a little different to you? Yeah, it feels, um, I don't know, a little less like I'm trying to like push through it and more like it's just sort of there. Yeah. And what were the changes that helped that helped you um, find find something that was less pushy? Um, I think definitely like thinking of it like, you know, sort of soaring up, but also just like making sure that I'm not like curling in or, you know, messing up my posture. I have really bad posture, so I need to work on that. We all do. I mean, do you see me like, cr like, you know, <laughs> slouching down towards my computer right now? <laughs> so no, yeah. it takes time. Yeah. And I know it's, I know it's probably one of those things that you've thought of and worked on before, but just sort of like taking that time out to check in with your breath and check in with your posture to remember that even in, in a piece that has a lot of speaky stuff, there's still an overlying legato um, yeah. and flow to it. I'm going to pass things over to uh, Mr. Norris now, because I know he had a few thoughts. Okay, uh, Kina, thank you so much for singing. I'm so honored to be in your first master class. I, I didn't do one until I was uh, very far into college. So I'm like so far ahead of me in my heart and bowing down to you and applauding you. So good for you. A um, couple of things. I, I think I reviewed your online classical singer submission. And I a lot of I thinks here. And I think I asked you um, to uh, to do more during the interludes. I think that was you. And I, if I didn't, you, the good for you, you were doing it. But if, if you were working on that, I really applaud you for that. Because one of the things I asked in my review of you was make use of the interludes. Don't wait for the next entrance. Like, okay, I'm not singing. And well, okay, now I'm singing. So I really applaud you for that. I, I, I think your preparation was great. Your enthusiasm was off the chart great. But I want to take just a minute and see if I can go just a little bit deeper with the character. So um, can you tell me, what can you tell me about this song? What's going on? Who's singing it and stuff like that? Yeah, okay. Um, 
Okay, see, now I'm blanking on the character's name, but I know the rest. Um, so uh, she it has this, um, like, correspondence with this man who she doesn't know through letters. She, like, got an ad through the newspaper, and she's like, ah, oh, let me reach out to this guy. And then they've been sort of writing back and forth to each other and then sort of have fallen in love. And in this song, she's, like, telling that to her new work friend. And she's like, hey, guess what? I'm in love with this guy. <laughs> Ah, and this is all in the musical She Loves Me, yes? Mm hmm Do you know where this musical comes from? Um, no. Okay, let me I'm... show you something. Because it's my belief that the more you know stuff like this, it makes your, ex your experience that much more rich. Mm -hmm. And then, in turn, your audience can be pulled into something even more enriched because you're enriched. So... There was this Hungarian play back in the 1930s. I think it was the Parfumier or something like that. But it was made into a movie called The Shop Around the Corner with Jimmy Stewart. And they usually show it at Christmas time. I'm going to say to you, I'm giving you homework. Are you ready? I want you to look up on Netflix or something, The Shop Around the Corner. It's a, it's Jimmy Stewart's the big star in it. And if you watch that movie, you're going to go, ah, now I know where She Loves Me comes from. So I want you, that's your homework, to watch the movie The Shop Around the Corner. Because what it does so well is basically lays out in a film format exactly what you just said. But this was like, I think in the 40s, this came mm -hmm. out. And Jimmy yeah, Stewart is writing letters to this person. And this person is writing letters to Jimmy Stewart. But they don't know they're writing to each other. But they work in the same shop and they can't stand each other in the same shop. But they love each other through the letters. So... You are singing this to this magical person that in real life you don't like at all, but through the fantasy of letters and notes and cards, you're very much in love. Now, let's leave that for the moment. Have you ever been in a movie? No. Okay. The one rule in a movie is this. Don't look in the camera. Don't look in, unless it's a comedic movie and you know, so they're talking else and they do a little side of the camera. Like, can you believe he said that? You know, and then it goes on. So let me ask you a question. Why would that be? Why would you not look in the camera and I'll call it a real movie? Um, I suppose it would like take you out of the situation of like you're sort of watching the movie and you're just watching these things happen to the characters and you're supposed to sort of forget that it's a movie. Right. If, if, if you look at in the camera in a movie, you draw that audience into that space, right? Into that space of that movie. I took my whole family to Chicago to see Wicked. It was very expensive. And we are on the last row of the main floor. It's so expensive. But I'll tell you, nobody in that cast ever, ever stopped and stared at somebody in row four, seat 32. They just didn't. They looked at a thousand people, but they looked at no one, but they looked at everyone because they never did this. Because that breaks this wall. And so here's my, my thought for you to take this a little bit deeper. If, it, if you agree, if your teacher doesn't agree, that's fine. I believe that when we perform, it's incumbent upon us to draw our audience into that performance by our wonderful acting skills. You've got a good face. You've got great eyes. You're a great actress. But I believe you, you draw people in by being this character you just told, you know, talked about. And you draw us in rather than this. I felt like as you were singing, for me a little bit, it was a little bit, I don't know, da, 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 looking right at me so much of the time. And I would challenge you, can you make this world when you perform that's so interesting, I have to watch you rather than feel like you're entering my world, you know? So can you do just the beginning of the song and try that? You may not agree with this. It may be a disaster. Oh, I'm getting the two minute mark, but I, 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 I have permission to go a minute over. So just, I'll yell stop after, after a few moments, okay? But I want you to draw us into your world. Don't stare at us. Don't look at the camera, all right? Be in a movie. Okay. All right, give it a try. Okay. Should okay. I, um, same question. Should I do my accompaniment or? Yes, 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 yes. Okay. I will just. I don't know his name or what he looks like, but I have a much more certain guide. I can tell exactly what he looks like inside. When 
I undertook this correspondence. Little did I know I'd grow so fond. Little did I know our views would so correspond. Okay. Good, 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 good. Now to stare at me or for me to stare at you is a little bit easy because I don't have to be quite so much in, in a character, but I'm telling you, you go to any professional play, musical, opera, you won't find the people up there on the stage staring at the audience, a, a particular audience member. It's weird. They look at everybody, but they're isolating no one, unless it's comedic. My, my wife played for Jerry Lewis once in this play, and he stopped the thing and started talking to people in the audience. That's different. That's completely, but I'll call it a legit play, a legit opera, musical, whatever. Challenge yourself to become that character and become so interesting. We have to watch you. We absolutely have to watch you. All right. Good work. So again, uh, bravo for such a good job on your first master class. Yay. Okay. Thank you. Thanks for putting up with me. <laughs> and maybe just before we switch over to our next singer, um, Kina, do you have any questions for us? Oh, um, not off the top of my head, but I might have some later. <laughs> We'll have time at the end, too. Okay. Gina, also, as Dr. Brown said, work that posture. Okay, that posture does need a little bit of refinement. Okay. That was beautiful, Kina. Thank you so much for participating. And congratulations. You got your first master class under your belt. Now, everything from here on out will just be easy. So <laughs> you did a great job. Okay, um, Jana, will you introduce yourself, please? Yes. Hi, my name is Jana Harmon. My pronouns are she, her. I'm 16 years old and I live in Richmond, Virginia. And today I will be singing Love's Philosophy by Roger Quilter. Dr. Brown, should I start? All right. You say Jana? Uh, Jana. Jana, Jana, all right. Uh, Jana. People want to be called by their correct name. <laughs> There's so many ways to say name sometimes. Yeah. Well, uh, Jana, that was really, really good. Thank it was you. good in so many ways. Um, it's a good, as I say to people, that's a good throat. <laughs> that's a very good throat. I have to say, I, I didn't make it up. I think I heard it from Papa Rotti. He said, you can't put in what God left out. And, he, you know, you got it. You got to put in there. That's really, really good. So you're blessed. Very nice. Very nice. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was really impressed because one of the things I look for at people are how relaxed are they in this area? I call it the tongue, the jaw, the articulators, the lips, and all that. So, boy, I was watching. I was going, wow, that's relaxed. That's relaxed. Oh, it's going up for the high note. Oh, you stayed really relaxed. So that's really good. Um, have you been in lessons for a long time? 
Um, about three years, yes. Okay. Well, well, uh, definitely uh, good, good, good work by you and your teacher. I know it's a joint venture. You have to have both parties working hard on it. So, um, yeah, I, I would say, share a couple of things. Um, I'm not going to deal with this. I sort of wish I could have seen like at least half of your body. Then I could more figure out your, your breathing, what's going on. But that's okay. It really is because here's what I want to talk about for a few minutes. That is such a good everything. It's full of expression. Um, you were becoming this character and being interesting, and I wanted to watch. Unfortunately, I had to write a few things down as you sang. I thought, oh, I hate doing this. I'd rather just watch. But here's what I'm going to ask you. If I was to ask you, what does it mean in singing to be musical? What's it mean to be musical? What would you say? I think sort of like in acting, like reading in between the, or singing in between the lines, like a good musician, like of course gets all the notes and rhythms right, but they also add part of them to the song. So like expression and um, yeah, the way you sing it or play it, I guess. Okay. All right. Well, you know, words are important. Words, but words can mean different things to different people. Like I, I, I say musical and you're saying expression. I, and I might say, well, that's to more acting. Or, but to me, let me give you my thoughts on what um, being musical is, because I think, and by the way, you take anything through your teacher. I'm not, you know, I've known you for 30 seconds now, <laughs> two minutes and 30 seconds. But here's what I would say. Being musical is one of the last elements in our performance that adds a layer that many people, frankly, never go to, even older people, college and so on. This being musical is, is one of the final things you add to a song or a presentation that's often neglected. Being musical for me has many aspects. It has a sense of, of when you sing a flow, you know, you sort of are singing this way, this way, this way not each every individual note like this. For me, it has, it's, it's a little mystical in a way. It is, I admit it. It's like there's a line, a flow. In, in music all the time, my wife's a harpist and she talks about line, flow, how there's a forward movement and it's like there's a, 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 a thread, um, a needle with a thread and there's all these pieces of fabric Mm -hmm. out in front of you and you're sort of going like this and you're just going through them like this and you're binding these individual pieces of fabric into one unit mm -hmm. and in mu singing musically you're taking all these notes and words and you're sort of combining them into one homogenous movement of forwardness so there's that let me let me tell you what i tell people many times and I, some students, I don't approach this because I don't think they're ready for this, but I think you are. Um, I, I, I tell them, you know, if you don't have, if you aren't musical, to me, there's a certain sameness to the presentation as far as the notes. Mm -hmm. um, it's like one of those old fashioned computer programs, you know, and it says, please enter the number anytime you wish to and leave, you know, it's very, every single syllable as the same emphasis and the same dynamic and all of that. That to me is, is not musical speaking. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I listen to people talk all day long. And one of the things I teach some musical theater people, and I do like musical theater people in many ways. One is they're, they're I often say they're musical speakers. Well, what's musical? Musical means sometimes you talk faster and sometimes you talk slower. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you talk higher and sometimes you talk lower. Sometimes you make use of pause. You see, you become interesting in your presentation. And this is being musical. Now, a very practical thing when you sing, not you, but anyone, um, is I think as you go through this line, this forward singing, um, I have a harp friend here named Joan Holland, and she gave me an article once that said, never play, and this is harp, who plays a million notes, never play three notes in a row the same way. Mm -hmm. always do something different. And I thought, oh my gosh, if a harpist is doing that, you know, what should a singer be doing? It has far less notes. So here's what I thought. I thought as you sang, great presentation, very thoughtful, very uh, evocative in your look. What a voice. But I thought for me, it didn't really move forward. It wasn't musical enough. 
the phrases weren't shaped enough. I believe almost every phrase you sing, not all of them, would be like this. Crescendo de crescendo in some way. In some way. The fountains mingle with a river. Da -dee 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 now that I try to be musical, you know, I'm not, I don't have a beautiful voice like you, but it was la da 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 dee da dee dee. That's singing, but it's not as musical. Can you see how one way it was shaped? It went somewhere, it pulled back some dynamic variants. Two phrases in a row, and they're both basically shaped like that. They start here, they crescendo, they move, they pull back. First big blast. Ba, ba, ba. Not ba, 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 ba. You see, there's a sameness to that. This is subtle. This is the kind of thing grandpa and grandma or aunts and uncles won't hear. You'll sing and they go, oh, honey, that was beautiful. That was beautiful. But this is the stuff teachers will hear. Okay. Judges will hear of competitions. This is what I say is the final aspect that a lot of singers never go to. They never get there. So I would urge you, we're not gonna I, I want to get out Dr. Brown and let Dr. Brown have some time because I know she has wonderful things to say, but I would urge you to think about bringing a more musical performance to this. Let every phrase grow. Now, some phrases go and they cut off in a big crescendo. That's fine. That's how that phrase works. But almost every phrase you breathe in and it goes somewhere, dynamic crescendo and pulls back. Go and, and sometimes you get three of those in a row and each one's a little bit bigger. But that makes it more interesting. And then you become more, for me, musical and always have that sense of, ooh, it's, it's like magical. It's like moving forward, like pulling taffy in your soul. Okay. All right. I'm going to stop torturing you now. <laughs> and I'll let Dr. Brown. But those are my thoughts. Great voice. I think it could be a bit more musical. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Very welcome. Jana, I agree. You have so much going for you here. It's, it's really gorgeous. So congrats to you. Um, and yeah, I, I agree with everything that my wonderful colleague said. And I think actually maybe we can take a minute and work on some of that together. Um, one of the things that I think might help you create more legato and more line is finding just a little more consistency in your jaw opening. Um, I really appreciate that that your text is so clear and intelligible, and it doesn't look like you're chewing. Does your jaw feel pretty open and relaxed? Um, yeah, I think so. Yeah. Um, so I think it's really just looking at how much change in the space is really necessary for each word and how much can stay consistent to help with that through line. So I like to do some like sing speaky stuff. So I might do the fountains mingle with a river and just feeling that space a little bit more. Yeah, more consistently. You give that a try. The fountains mingle with the river. Yeah, you just have a little extra chew on foul, foul. You have a lot of gorgeous smile in your sound, and that gives you the sparkle, which is good. So I would just say you can balance with a little bit of ah. Oh. The fountains mingle. The fountains mingle. Can your tongue do more of the work for the end? Found fountains. Fountains. Yeah, it's just like a little bit less pressure. Mm -hmm. And if you're looking at, you know, the course of a whole recital or a whole opera role, those little things can build up. So, okay, taking this along. The fountains mingle with the river and the rivers, rivers. The fountains mingle with the rivers and the rivers. Yeah, rivers with the ocean. Rivers with the ocean. Yeah, and let your breath. Rivers. I didn't feel anything change here. And you can actually, the thing I like about Zoom is you can see yourself too and look if there's just any of those little moves. Right. Try that again, and the rivers. 
and the rivers with thee. Yeah, keep going. The winds of heaven mix forever. Yeah, you don't even need to open that much because oh. sometimes over opening can be too much change for line two. Sure. With the oh, it's from. Yeah, the winds of heaven. The winds of heaven mixed forever. Yeah. With sweet emotion. Yeah, that gave you more space on sweet too, which I think could have used just a little more verticality. Okay. Let's see if we can sing with some of this and just see how it how it changes things. Okay. Trying to... Or if it changes things, I shouldn't assume. <laughs> Yeah, so pause, actually pause your thing. <laughs> and the, uh, uh, the fountains mingle with the river, and the river. I want that to be breath led. Okay. And the river, the river. Can you just sing without the accompaniment? Yeah. And the rivers with the ocean. Yeah, can you have more through line? Let's do it sloppy. Rivers! Rivers. Yeah, yeah. Connect them. That's different for me. Yeah. Is that subtle or big for you? Um, I sort of felt like tight at that point in time before, and it feels yeah. like it's more breath led. It feels easier. Yeah, yeah, I love that idea, breath led. Rivers with the ocean. Again. Rivers with the ocean. Keep going. Winds of heaven mix forever with the sun emotion. Can sweet be so sweet? A little bit more, yeah, just a, and not like stretched open, but just a little bit more open. going nothing in the world is single all things by our lord divine in one another's being mingled. that's one that wants to to grab just a little what do you feel there jenna those notes where it jumps really high like it's low and then it just jumps i definitely feel a little tightness here yeah and it still sounds gorgeous but we want it to feel really good too so yeah that's where okay, that's where i would be thinking feeling a little bit more of a tucker a little more lean or a poggio um where's a good place to start the winds of heaven oh, sweet nothing in the world is single Nothing in the world is single. All things by our Lord mm. divine. Now with your breath. Another's being <laughs> like I always imagine, like pulling the scarves out, like that mu that magician's trick. Can you just do? <laughs> you don't need so much here, I think. Yeah, yeah. In, uh, in one another's being mingle. One more time. In one another's being mingled. Why not? Yeah, let's finish it off. Why not? Why not? I with the well, let that go too. Let the breath do the work. One on I. Yeah, why not? I? Instead, why not? I? That's a little bit more pressure. Okay. Why not I with a vine? Not I with a vine. Good. So I know these are like kind of nitpicky things, but I, I think that if you 
if you go back a little bit to the breath, I know, and I talked about with breath, <laughs> breath with Kina too. It's my favorite thing. But if you go back and find the parts where, okay, where could my breath carry a little bit more of the work for me? Where do I feel just a slight grabbing here? Where can I let that go? Where can I find more consistency? Then I think that that will open up the path for some of that shaping um, and some of that, um, you know, the hairpin stuff that Mr. Norris talked talked about because if you get to that point of nuance with your support and 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 breath shaping yeah it just it comes more naturally and i sense a lot of that's probably in here already it's just setting up your body right, right. to do that better for you for yeah sure. you so much. yeah you're welcome how are we on time um, well, it it looks like um, Isaac is not going to make it. At least he hasn't showed up. So if you have a few more minutes with Jana that you'd like to do anything, that's great. Otherwise, we can move on to some questions. It's totally up to you. Sure. Maybe let's just take a moment and maybe let's do this again with your accompaniment, Jana, and let's see if if we can combine some of these ideas. So we'll try for some of this, <laughs> some of this some of this and some of this <laughs> Good, good. So, Jenna, we had a moment there where you felt like, oh, that's the space. Right. What does that feel like and sound like to you? How are you, you going to identify that in your practice? I'm not good at hearing what it sounds like, but I'm good at feeling what it feels like. Well, that's and good. That's actually more reliable. What does it feel like? It feels, um, it feels like less is happening here, like less is going on here. Yeah. And I feel like lighter in my mouth, if that makes sense. Like it just feels like cloudy. <laughs> um, <Yes. laughs> so it de that definite, and I think that's also going to give me more ability to like do what um, uh, Mr. Norris was talking about with the Mesa di Voces uh, throughout the piece. Yeah. Um, work on more. <laughs> but yeah, and that's why I like to think about like the transitions, like not only like what's the right vowel for this moment, but how am I moving from vowel space to vowel space? And is it or, 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 or is it just sort of <laughs> yeah, beautiful, beautiful work. Thank you to you and thank you to Kina. So we'll give our round of applause. <laughs> So now we have some time that we can chat. Yes, thank you. Both of our singers, oh, such a beautiful job. So yeah, if we have any questions, love for you to either raise your hand um, digitally or virtu or physically, that was the other word I was looking for, <laughs> or you're welcome to put it in the chat if you prefer. And um, yeah, we'll see if we have any questions. You can ask questions about the program or about singing or you know laura and jeff's personal lives no i'm just joking <laughs> <laughs> oh why not <laughs> and another thing we do um i i forgot to mention it before um we we uh, have an opera workshop and we do operas at interlock in too and, and that's pretty unique to have um you know young people sing the starring roles so we can talk about that too and singing for the stage Well, I don't see any hands quite yet, but maybe while they're thinking, can you guys tell us a little bit about Interlochen and what all you guys that do there and just give us a little introduction? Sure, I can start off. So um, right now we're in our academy year. So it's a high school grades nine through 12. Um, and we also actually have a postgrad program for um, students looking for maybe a gap year to focus on their art. Um, 
and, and kind of figure out what's next. Um, so our students take, yes, the normal high school classes um, and, and graduate with their diplomas, but you also major in an arts field. And we have music and dance and creative writing and film and new media. So it's really cool because you're around artists all day, but not just singers and not just musicians. Um, so we actually get to work together on some pretty cool collaborative projects. Um, and we have voice lessons and studio classes and um, master classes. And um, we also run an opera program. So Mr. Norris and I just spent the two, uh, the two hours before this master class actually in rehearsals for our spring opera, which is, um, an opera on the little prince have any of you read that novel or or maybe seen one of the movies no it's so beautiful um and rachel portman who's really well known as a film composer actually wrote a gorgeous opera um after the little print so we're doing a full production which is lovely which actually by the way you can see because we're webcasting and, and streaming it so you can check out our website for that yeah, the only thing I'd add to that is is that uh, we're we're a fairly big school. We have over 500 people, and most of them are right here on the campus. And yes, we actually had them here this year on campus um, for the vast majority of time. It was a adjusted year because of COVID, like most schools did. But but they were here the first 18 weeks, a little bit different than normal. 18 weeks they were here. Then they had eight weeks off. The students. And then they came back and uh, we were aiming for 12, 14 weeks, whatever it was. To, and we actually graduate, I think, in five more weeks. Um, so we've, uh, I think the school's done a wonderful job trying to shepherd all of the students through this. I don't know what your schools were like at home, but it's been tough. It's been really tough. And we've been masked like most everybody. We're hoping, uh, knock on a thousand pieces of wood, that next fall everything will be much more relaxed and we'll be back to a normal routine and... And uh, yes, and Dr. Brown described, we have choirs as well, and choirs, voice lessons, recitals, that sort of thing. And um, yeah, that'd be our, our program in a nutshell. Uh, Lindsay, I see Lindsay down here on my screen. Um, she could answer any direct questions you have about the school or admissions or anything like that. Thanks, Jeff. And I, I wanted to note that uh, we are operating our camp at a reduced capacity just to keep everyone safe this summer. Uh, but we do still have uh, spots available in our high school voice and opera program. Uh, so, so if you have any questions at all about the, the application process, I am so easy to get a hold of and I'm, I'm happy to either chat on the phone or through email, uh, but I'll put my, my information in the chat. Uh, it's a really easy email. It's just lindsay at interlochen.org. That's, I have two versions of my email, but well, that's the easy one. <laughs> but um, are there any questions about a camp or academy? What is the, um, what is like the application process or audition process look like for, I guess, your summer program and your um, like school? That's a great question, Jana. Uh, and the application is pretty, pretty simple. Uh, just some questions. Um, for the camp, it's a little more simple than for the academy. Uh, the academy, we need some transcripts and some recommendation let letters from arts teachers. Uh, but the audition process, I'll, um, I'll let uh, Dr. Brown and, and Jeff uh, speak about uh, what you lo look for in those um, those videos and yeah, I'll, I'll yield to you on that. <laughs> Thanks, Lindsay. So yeah, um, basically we ask people for video performances of um, you know two classical pieces if you're auditioning for the classical program or, or whatever genre you're auditioning for. So two pieces, it's nice if you can show contrast um, and it's good if it's memorized so you can sh show some character and acting, which both of our singers today really excelled at. And um, really what we're looking for is potential. So yeah, we're looking for like, do you have, do you have a throat <laughs> that, that you can do something with? But, but even more so, do you have a passion for singing? Um, do you have a love for what you're singing? You know, do you have something to say with your music? And, um, and do you have some, do you have something that, um, 
that you want to develop. So I think a lot of people go into this process and think, oh, I have to be perfect and I have to be like totally polished. Um, but this is a school. It's not a professional company. We're not looking for for perfect, polished people. We're looking for people who are really serious about what they do and 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 show that passion and show that potential. So in that aspect, um, you know, we're flexible with things. And we know that everyone is using pre-recorded accompaniments now and and app companist and all of that. And we want also want to make things accessible um, based on what you have access to, especially in this crazy, crazy year. Um, and I'd say for anyone who's thinking about applying and they're not sure about their rep, like email us and ask us. I'm so happy to recommend pieces and repertoire um, and where to find them and where to get them. Um, so yeah, that's what we're looking we're looking for. Um, Mr. Norris, is there anything that you'd like to add? Well, I think you and Lizzie covered it really well. I would say, you know, we really deal mostly, Dr. Brown and myself, with the classical end of things. There is, uh, there's also musical theater, which is a whole separate division. And then there's uh, singer-songwriters, which is a separate popular voice and that sort of thing. I uh, work a little bit with those folks, a little bit, not maybe give a, a lesson to them. And that's about it. But the bulk of what Dr. Brown and I do is more in the classical area, the classical uh, uh, area of the academy. But uh, we have those other programs as well. I don't. I look at you guys, I don't know, I have an idea what you're after, but I'm not sure. And maybe you have a friend that's interested. And so, so I know coming to the summer camp can also be a good way to come and see what's it like? What's that place like up there in the middle of nowhere, Michigan. And uh, it's actually a happening place. Now, I'm going to tell you right now. So you you probably have a good time if you came. So I would hope you would. So yeah. So anyways, we have a lot of lot of components, a lot of moving parts to this. And, uh, and they're all great. And they, we offer something for everybody. I, I really believe that. I'd also just say for, for this summer, um, we have more options available this summer, which is really cool. So we have like this three week, three week voice and opera program. So you get to dig into like your diction and do opera scenes and, and you know, voice lessons and all of that. Um, I also am super lucky because this year I get to create a one week program. We call this an intensive. So it's like one week you bring your pieces and we polish them up and we do, you know, tons of master classes and acting. We're going to like start our day with yoga every morning and then warm up together and talk about um, like how to be a great practicer because you spend more hours in the practice room than you spend in the studio with your teacher. Um, I'm working with um, an awesome, awesome co-teacher, Kathy Kelly, who is um, an opera coach and accompanist at um, CCM and uh, was previous on previously on faculty at University of Michigan and worked for Vienna Staatsoper and the Med and all of these wonderful things. Um, and she's super, super cool as well. Um, so lots of fun stuff. And talking also, we have um, classes about like career paths and citizen artistry, like, okay, what do we do <laughs> with this music in our world right now? Because there's a lot happening in the world right now. And how does that fit in and play a part? So yeah, like lots of different options and ways to explore your craft. And all of you, by just being here and being involved with classical singer, um, are already on that path. That was great. That was some great information. And hopefully everybody uh, really took some good notes because that was very helpful. Um, OK, any last minute questions? Do we have any final questions? I have like a two second question. Perfect. When is um, the like application deadline for your like school? For the boarding school, Jana? Yeah, it, we have what's called rolling admission. And uh, so I would uh, send me an email if you're interested. And I, I'd, love, I'd love to chat with you and connect you with our counselor that works directly with the music pro program applicants for the academy. Um, yeah, I think you'd love it here. It's it's a wonderful place. And, and you get to work with, with Mr. Norris and Dr. Brown. So how can you beat that, right? <laughs> 
It looks like Layla has a question too. Layla. Yes. So, I mean, I'm still in middle school. I'm sure this will change in high school, but um, I currently don't really know anybody else like in my school or anywhere that has the same interest in opera and classical music that I do. Do you have any suggestions for networking and like kids my age? Um, yeah. Well, does, that does your school a have a choir? Yes, and I mean, I know a lot of the kids in that choir, and it's, they're more into the musical theater, yeah. um, uh, like uh, stuff, which I'm not saying that's bad. I guess. When you what say- What city or region are you from? Sorry. Oh, go ahead. Sorry, I'm near Boston, uh, like west of Boston. Sometimes, sometimes um, there are, sometimes there's like community education divisions at colleges so like boston conservatory does a lot of educational programs and they do summer programs as well and um so you can sometimes take lessons there boston has a bunch of um, opera companies as well so they might be looking for children's chorus members um when performances are happening again um, and I'd also say, even if you're not ready to come to maybe interlock in in person, we also do our own online camp. And I think we were one, we were one of the first institutions to pivot once COVID hit. It was I mean, like literally a week later. Here we go. I'm actually coming this summer. So that's awesome. I should oh. tell you that before you keep going. <laughs> no, that's perfect. So. That's one of the best ways to meet people. And then, you know, people that come to camp or do interlocking online, like you meet people and then they're all Facebook friends or, or whatever social media that you like to, to use um, and they keep in touch. Now, and then, you know, I've got colleagues here that, that met at camp and then they keep in touch for 50 years and they're like in each other's weddings and things like that. So that's one of the best things because I was the same as you. I had a lot of musical theater friends and a lot of choir friends and that was awesome, but it was a little different than some of the solo like vocal stuff that I was really passionate about. All right, thank you. Yeah. Okay, any other thoughts, final thoughts? Okay, well, that this has been a super great um, class. Thank you so much um, to Dr. Brown and Dr. Norris. We're so grateful to have had you here and also to Lindsay for being here to answer questions. Um, I think we have some really great talent in this group for for future. So thank you everyone for joining us and hopefully we will see you guys around. I do believe actually Lindsay, maybe you know this. Um, I'm I'm guessing the Interlochen has a schedule for the expo coming up. Yes. Uh, we are two to four PM on Saturday. Is that on mm -hmm. Saturday? Yeah. Perfect. Yes. So, so you if can you have stop by and say hi again to me, I'll be there. <laughs> yes. If you find you have more questions, be sure to to go in and join and talk to them. So thank you everyone for being here. It's been very lovely and you all have a have a great day, evening, wherever you are. Great. Thank you thank all. You so much. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Thank you, Mary.